Sup, sup, sup. My name is Reed for the Yu Gi Oh! Council. Welcome to Coffee Time. And goddamn, it's on a Monday night when it's supposed to be in the morning. Well, to be fair, up here in the east, it's fairly cold. So, we have coffee late nights. Um, so let's talk about the ban list. And that's what this video is about. It's basically ban list predictions and just let's talk about the ban list. Now, before I go straight into this video, there's no channel update this week. Before I go straight into the video, let me just say the following. This is what I could see Konami doing, not what directly is going to happen. I don't make the ban list, so don't get all butt hurt and all salt. Just say. So, I actually have a prediction list and a wish list. The wish list is sort of similar to a point. Um, and there's actually a reason for that, because I don't really want too much, you know, stuff hit in the game. To be fair, and um, I just like I, I like when stuff comes back. I don't really care if things get hit per se, but sometimes meta decks just need to move out of the way for newer meta decks. So that's the premises of this. We do not know when the ban list is dropping. So if you're going to ask when the ban list is dropping, Konami has not even given a hint about when it's coming. Therefore, I cannot tell you. So we'll start with the ban section first. And yes, there's a ban section. There's one thing I hate in this game, and it's FT fucking K's and just pure locks and everything like that. But for what I predict Konami's gonna do in the band section, Telenite Plotamius. This is something that's not used in Telenites. Generally, it's used in every single rank four spam deck. I can see Konami hitting it as a preempt way of Cyber Infinity when it comes to our shores of never really being uber broken. Now that's probably gonna be uh, say another nine to ten months before we get it, but at the same time I could see Konami hitting it for the same reason that we could bring out diamond with it and everything else So it's kind of one of those preem hits while also being a hit to the game because it let's be honest It's not a healthy card when you your decks not supposed to make cyber Nova dragon or you know Not supposed to be able to go cyber infinity and you're gonna use this to go to that so or Consolo Diamond is fair enough, but anything above that, it starts to get a pain, and it's one of those things that, if not now, later on I can see Konami hitting. Raigeki, this is one card that, I, I feel it's a snatch deal, it's going to come on and off kind of thing. Now, the meta decks coming up are primarily Pendulum, primarily, because we don't know anything else uh, what could pop up, maybe just Monarchs. Monarchs don't give a shit about Raigeki, because they have the anti-destruction effect, you know, with their spell card. And the pendulums don't give a shit because if you don't OTK them that turn, they're just going to utilize it against you and just go at you. So Raigeki is kind of more... How do I put this? It's the takeout sack of the game. That's what I would see Konami doing if they actually did care. If they would hit Plutamius, Raigeki, and uh, everything else here. But, again, I don't know if Konami actually cares that much. So Raigeki is definitely something I could see uh, going away. And with that, I could also see Vanity's Emptiness going away because of the same fact you know it takes the fun out of the game and basically it makes into okay i set up my otk i protect my otk by flipping vanity's emptiness and with dragon spine coming up i can see konami hitting vanities just as a way to kind of promote hey you know just make star spark dragon your deck and then do this you know you put the dragon's blind i don't know it's just something i can see konami doing this by preempt hitting vanity's emptiness and finally <clears throat> the one thing that really does need to be hit with cleaforts I can see Cleave Fort Tower finally being banned because let's be honest. And let's be honest with each other here. How many times you go to build a deck and you have to put in in your extra deck a towers out? This is Yu-Gi-Oh! I understand that meta decks will be meta decks or decks that are good will be good, but to always have to play that towers out takes a little bit of the originality out of the game and says, This is becoming cookie cutter. And I could see Konami going against that. Because towers is something that's going to ruin their sales because hey look towers turbo is still a thing So it's kind of one of those things I could see hitting Now I'm gonna finish talking about what I uh, predict on this video and then probably do a wish list on a separate video because It'd be a totally different discussion So limited section we have a dark magician of chaos reprint incoming and It's probably gonna retain the errata. So this is a perfect time to see Konami actually saying Okay, if we, hypothetically, if Konami would post out the list a week from today, because that makes around the three, four months we've had this current list. If they would do that, and then two weeks to reprint season of Dark Magician of Chaos, and it comes out in that 
uh, Yugi Collector's Edition box thing. So you would have a great way to sell a product, not only to the casual market, but to the competitive market as well. Hey, you need DMOC? We got DMOC. Stores when would get DMOC sold. Stores that may not have any Dark Magician of Chaos. You know, and yes, there's a battle pack version, but some people do like it hollow or whatnot. And it just gives circulation again with the errata, so you get some off the list that could easily come back because the new version's a lot more balanced. And at the same time, you're not really breaking any decks coming out. Oh wait, no, yes you are. You can actually give it to magicians, and the magicians can use it. But that's a good thing because you want to push those magicians because it'll be in that format. So hypothetically, I can see Dark Magician and Chaos coming back. One thing that I will mention on this video that I don't know if Konami is going to bring it back, but it should, is Chaos and Bird Dragon. And because the errata is like just completely balanced for the most part. I mean, let's be honest. At this point in time, Chaos Emp can go to three as OCG has it, and just it would be fine. So Dark uh, Dark Magician and Chaos, I could definitely see Chaos Emp. I'm hoping. And it would make sense, but I don't see the reprint coming, so it's kind of, it would be that Trish status where basically we wouldn't have the reprint for a few months, and that's very ballsy by Konami if they do do it. Alright, <clears throat> going on to the stuff that is currently legal at 3 or whatnot and going from there. So, Wavering Eyes. This is going to be surprising of people from, to hear from me. I can see Wavering Eyes go on the list, if not limited, semi only to slow down the, you know, pendulum motion. But at the same time, I can't really see it going on because we're getting more pendulums as meta decks and you want to use Wavering Eyes to break scales to get your better scales out because it's more search power. I think everyone and their mother knows that's pretty much what you do with Wavering Eyes at this point. Secondly, moving on from the Wavering Eyes, I'm just going to touch upon that. Um, either Graph or Sif. I believe Sif is the one that loops. I'm not 100% sure uh, because... I'll have the one that loops on screen. That's the one that basically needs the, the limit. I think it's Sif or uh, Graph. It's one or two. But Burning Abyss do need that hit to take out their loop status. They still have Dante for recovery. So when you make the Dante play, you're not going to be completely hurt. I could also see the Fire Lake going down to one because it's going to break the Pendulum scales. And it just keeps the balance so the newer decks can rise. And let's be honest, Burning Abyss have been over, here, over a year of meta, so... I think it's time they, you know, they step down from the light and then eventually get their stuff back. Um, contract. And there's actually a reason I say contract. OCG had banned contract. Shadow players had basically gone all the way down when contract was hit. So I could see that kind of being a mirror here where it gets limited. But at the same time, I could probably see something like Shadow Fusion because it's Konami and TCG being hit instead. I'm not saying for certain it'd be either one. I'm just saying something Shadal, most likely Contract or Shadal Fusion, would make the most sense uh, coming from Konami's side. For Satoa Knights, because they did win Worlds, even if they're not relevant, Konami's going to hit them. It's just going to happen. It happened with Infernies and everything else. That even at the time, like GBs weren't really relevant, they still got hit. Because GBs were being power creeped out and they still got hit. So. I think we're going to see that with Satoru Knights, as it's just like a preempt thing, if anything. And most likely it will be Deneb, Altair, Reinforcement to the Army, probably one of those three, or their Counter Trap card. I'm betting it's going to be Deneb and Satoru Knight, Nova Alpha. I think it's going to be those two cards, and maybe Altair, just as a fuck you to the to the deck. Honestly, I would just ban Trivia and be done. Because let's be honest, them having that giant true nade is the real problem. Everything else, not so much. Now, the one thing I will mention is Necrots. I didn't mention Trish Necrots being banned, because let's be honest, we have the regular Synchro version, and I think they're doing okay where they are. So let's be, let's just talk about the real problems in Necrots that Konami, if logic intends here, which we know it won't, should actually probably hit. Necrots of Unicorn. They're out. They're rank four spammer. The reason that the Clown Blade version actually works to a certain degree. That's number one. Or the mirrors. Or hell, even a Bridal hit again. Because let's be honest here. By hitting Manju and Senju, you're not just hitting a cross and they have their own searchers. You're gonna hit the freaking little innocent ritual decks that maybe later down the line you wanna promote. 
And that's something that I don't always agree with, you know, like the scapegoat hit. I think they just need to straight up hit them again. And that's what they did last time. They actually hit Shuret. So that actually did a little bit. Obviously, Necrots are still pretty much the best deck, so they need another one. All right, moving down to the semi-limited section, because that's all I really want to talk about, Necrots. Again, this is more if Konami's actually being smart, and I want to say that they would hit Scout, but I think Towers is enough of a hit. All right, semi. Lose one turn, reinforcements the army, compulsory evacuation device. There are actually a reason I say these three cards. I'll start with lose one turn, we'll go from there. Lose one turn basically can stop quite a few meta decks right in their tracks because they're not going to get their effects. And Magicians have an out to it. Monarchs mm, depends if they have set up. That's the problem right there, and that's the only reason I can see this being semi. But at the same time, I can't really see it 100% being hit. It's more Konami preempting. Because ever since Clown Blade, and we didn't expect Chain to go because Chain was innocent. True then uh, lose one turn probably will go down the same route if Konami wishes it. Reinforcements to the army. I talked about says Hollow Knights winning worlds and they'll probably get hit regardless. And that's pretty much the primary uh, primary reason behind Reinforcements to the army. Compulsory evacuation device. It's a trap card that hasn't been seen in many of decks. It's fallen out of flavor. Putting it back to two is pretty safe to say the least. You know, So I, I think that would be all right if Konami actually does it. I think it makes sense because they're going to want to clear up the list a little bit. Maybe they'll leave it. Maybe there won't be any semis. Maybe they're like, what the fuck semis? But these are the three I can see. My to three, to what I predict. Dragon Ravine. This makes the most sense because, well, they put it back at two. Just give it back to three. Dragoonies may go rogue and actually be a tier two at best or tier 1.5, but they're not going to break the game. So you can safely give it to them. And it promotes Dragon's uh, Bind as well because of the start of Spark Lock. Tragodia. This is one that people are probably raising out eyebrow to. Tragodia promotes lower tiers to have a little more defense if they so wish it. Chaos Dragons are primarily the biggest user of it. Um, or Lightsworn. And that's where things get a little bit tricky and why I see it saying it too because of Lightsworn Syndrome. Because it was actually using Lightsworn quite a while ago. Chaos Wester 3. It's not a biased thing, it's actually something I could see Konami doing at this point, just to clear up a little bit of the list, you know, return some stuff at 3. And finally, Ceasefire, because again, I'm not being biased, I'm just being honest on what I could see it. Those are my predictions, I want you guys to leave your predictions in a nice manner, not killing each other over something we have no control over, because let's be honest, and this is why it's called Let's Talk About the Band List, because let's be honest, we have no control over it. Everyone's going all PTSD about the ban list. I'm just sitting here going, show the new ban list so I can create some amazing deck profiles again and not have to worry about, like, deleting them and redoing it. And while we're at it, Dead Pro, please fix your servers, please. I love you guys sometimes. Your, your RNGs are horrible, but at the same time, I, need, I, I count on you guys. But anyway, th that's my predictions. That's all I can see really Konami doing. I can't really see them going overboard or anything like that. If you do want the... My wish list, I'll actually post it right after this as a bonus video because I'll have it recorded and I'll just have to edit it out for you guys for tomorrow with Tech Tuesday. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for more videos. Woohoo! So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to rate, comment, subscribe. Check out the videos and the annotations as always. Make sure to check out our other channels, the Council Network, the Pokemon Council, the Vanguard Council, and on October 21st, the Gaming Council. Yes, we have too many channels. Yes, we do a lot of content. Yes, we get everything out to you guys because we love you. And we wouldn't change it for the world. Thank you guys for everything, and we'll see you later.